Hey everyone, it's Ted from Mob Rules. So we got another video for you. Um, this time I'm trying something a little bit different. Um, it came in a bag, a jean down at tier one, kind of a bag pusher, and insisted that I take the bag. Mm, yes, so there's a thing inside the bag. What is inside the bag? It's terrain! So there's a little bit of gleam here. Let's see gleam. <laughs> so this is kind of a neat, the uh, Galvanic Servo Haulers. Um, it was kind of a sleeper. I didn't see it coming at all. Uh, I don't remember seeing anything about it on the rumor reel. I think maybe everybody's been just like stuck in the snowstorm of 8th edition. Uh, and it, maybe it just went under the radar. But um, I have to say a lot of people have been super excited about this. And so have I. I mean, I think I saw it after it came out on pre-order. I was just kind of like, nah, I'm not gonna pay attention to pre-orders for a little bit because eighth edition is coming, so who cares? They're not gonna put anything out there, but they did. And that's super smart. I'm, I'm really happy that Games Workshop is doing something um, in the meantime, because I mean, nobody's really gonna be buying a whole lot, so why not do terrain? Because that's a kind of a universal thing. It doesn't matter what the rules do. So here it is. Let's, um, you wanna take a look inside of this thing? I do, I do, me, pick me, pick me. All right, here we go. The Gabonic ser uh, Servo Haulers. Um, so this is kind of cool. I mean, this kind of goes back to, I think we were discussing this in one of our uh, podcasts, uh, at, like what all the different shapes a, um, a, a servitor has, you know, like maybe your entire life, if you fail as a, um, as a surf, will end up as a servo uh, hauler. <laughs> kind of a neat idea. Uh, I think we're joking about how you could end up as a toaster or an alarm clock. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and bust this guy open. So, yeah. All right, it has plastic. You ever see Twin Peaks? I always get that one line in my head. She's wrapped in plastic. Stuck in my head. Anyway. Uh, there we go. Okay, box on the floor. So apparently this has its own rules, and lo and behold, rules. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll take a look at those later. Um, I think I'll probably do like a, a build. I don't know if I'm gonna do the actual build. So it's two sprues. Man, this is, this is heavy duty terrain plastic. This is not your typical model plastic. Uh, so it's it's feeling pretty hefty. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean it's it's really thick. This is this is this is like the kind of stuff, and it's really stout looking. I mean, look at those chains right there. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you're ha you might have a hard time with the uh, uh, scale of it, but I mean it's stout. Uh, yeah, these are. These are definitely to be uh, manhandled and thrown in a box, <laughs> only to be used like once in a while and broken multiple times over. Uh, oh, okay. Those chains are, God, these chains are cool. I'm really digging these chains. Uh, yeah, oh, man, they're beefy. I love that each little, uh, I mean, there's punch outs in between each link. So there's a lot of detail in there. So I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely I'm, I'm I'm convinced that's CAD. I mean I know that they're doing CAD exclusively, but I mean it, yeah, I mean how could you how could you possibly mold this stuff, you know, like with a your typical plastic mold and the green stuff. I mean it's this is legit. Oh man, I love like all this uh, like the the look and feel that they're really giving the Mechanicum and a lot of those guys anymore. You know, like the uh, it has like that retro kind of 50s sci-fi look that's and, and so it's, sorry usually I'm a lot more talkative than this or a lot more expressive but I'm just kind of in awe uh you know just like looking at these I mean it, so I grew up like uh um in a construction household my dad had a construction company and everything so and unfortunately <laughs> we were not very profitable um so we had a lot of older machinery so looking back at some of these designs you know like I really had like an affinity for like older tractors and stuff like that and this definitely has like that older kind of um alice chalmers tractor kind of face look to it um but then of course it has like its own thing like none of our tractors had you know big skulls on them so uh i think that's that's awesome so 
I mean, we're starting to just some of these elements, like it's very high Gothic, but it also has like a real, like a, a working uh, feel to it, like a real industrial feel. I mean, all right, looking over this uh, other um, piece here. Oh man. So, you know, we have these, these treads. Um, what's kind of interesting is that, you know, like looking at kind of tread design, you know, they don't have lugs on here. So this is like an inner city kind of track that's <laughs> oddly, you know, like when they don't put the lugs on here, when you have like these flat tracks, that's usually for inner cities. So you don't tear up asphalt. So it's kind of neat. Like, um, I mean, that, that might not be interesting to you, but it's, you know, if they were considering that when they were designing this, it's like, is this an inner city thing? Is this to be used in, uh, on dirt roads, et cetera, et cetera you know, more than likely, uh, this kind of just shows like the care, I guess that, you know, like we often think the mechanic of doesn't give a shit <laughs> about anything. Um, and the Imperium just, you know, they're very utilitarian, but you know, there is like some sort of care here. Um, like, all right, well, let's not tear up the roads too much. Um, so that's kind of fun. I mean, maybe not intentional, but it's cool. Um, yeah, it looks like we have like kind of like almost a train front end here. Um, and then like a lot of similar uh, design elements, like here you have this, uh, a repeated design element. So we have this, this light, you know, which is a very typical um, Games Workshop light, you know, like the, the armor uh, over the light fixture. Um, I mean, you almost always see that, that, uh, uh, what is the, that's not the ampersand. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> a pound sign, uh, hashtag, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, over everything, all the lights. So, uh, oh, this is one of the cool bits that I was looking at them in the magazine. Um, gosh, I love the shit out of these. Uh, I mean, stuff like this, like the little, uh, um, I don't know what that is. If it's like a, 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 an exhaust, or I mean, I'm sorry, a, a fire retarder, uh, or whatever it is, you know, that's, that's really cool. Maybe it's like an oil can. But it's those little things. It's going to be those little things that are going to end up on people's conversions, you know, all over the place, you know. So this is going to be a very coveted item. I know, like, back in the day, they had the Orc Battle Wagon, and there was tons of these. Like, you had, like, bone saws and screwdrivers and uh, drill guns and stuff like that, you know. Just tons of bits in there, and like, you just, like, throw on stuff. So it was, like, you know, conver conversion central. Um, and here's another one that uh, I think was out and about was the toolkit. I love it, man. Like, you know, it, it looks like, a, you know, it's, it's a legit toolkit. Granted, <laughs> it's a lot cleaner than a lot of the toolkits I've seen. Like, you know, here's uh, two tools and a nut. <laughs> you know, here's two tools. Like, normally you'd see a whole bunch of, I don't know, uh, ends for electrical bits and like random shit. You just like throw everything in your box and uh, go on to the next project. Um, but no, it's cool. This is really neat. And I love like all the, um, you know, there's a lot of like throwback to, to real, um, modern first world implements, you know, like for this, you know, that's, that's a cutting torch. Like they took a cutting torch and they down a grade, or I'm sorry, increased the size or scale of it. And that was that, sorry, my cell phone's going off. Um, but you know, that's, 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 that's real. Um, so I, I don't know, that kind of harkens that it kind of, I don't know. It, 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 it speaks to me. <laughs> it speaks to my grow ones up. Um, but man, this is, this is really cool. I'm just, I really do see like a lot of really cool conversion potential. Okay. So another, you know, hearkening back to, um, a real life thing, you know, we have like a train chassis, uh, a car, uh, what is it? The trucks? Oh, I don't remember what they're called. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really neat. Like this on the other hand is very, a lot more utilitarian instead of like those, um, uh, road, uh, safe, uh, plates, uh, with, I mean, this is, you know, this is tear the crap out of stuff, but, uh, but I hear that once you put this together, you can put either the crane on it. There's that crane. I think there's parts of it down here. Um, or you can use the, uh, uh was the cargo containers on there. So there's going to be like a, a utility, you know, like you can use multiple things on there, which I love like that versatility that they're putting in their designs. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of this, uh, it's at least with this kit, you know, it's going to, it looks like it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, there's only one build for it, but it's going to be, you know, buying other kits that you're going to be able to do other builds with. So I think that's really smart. You know, don't give all the toys, 
uh, all the options in one kit, but you know, give the options in multiple kits. Uh, so you can trade it up. You know, that's that's really clever. So yeah, man. Um, I don't know what to, what else to say about these. I mean, you know, once again, we're I'm definitely seeing a lot of imp like a uh, real world um, things in here. You know, this is probably uh, I bet that's the the tongue for the trailer. Uh, attaches onto one of the uh, cargo or one of the haulers. Ah, my phone! Damn phone! It's probably Twitter telling me that people like a tweet <laughs> or they're like hating on my tweets. Um, but you know, it is neat to see like this utilitarian thing, and then like all of a sudden there's the 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 high gothic command center. You know, like so it's it's I think this is the perfect blend. You know, really of like uh, a practical meets um not you know <laughs> like it's it's just enough uh because i think like it's sometimes in the past like gw went really hardcore gothic uh and it just like made no sense uh, but this is like a beautiful amalgam uh amalgamation whichever the two of of those so yeah so um i'm gonna go ahead and put these together i don't think i'm gonna do like a whole um uh, tutorial on how to do it but i just want to throw these together real quick um, cause I think there's probably like too many parts, you know, when it's Forge World, it's really easy to, uh, do it on the video, but I think there's like so many parts and it looks like it's pretty straightforward. So I don't think you'll have like a big uh, problem building this yourself. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do that and then we'll play with it. All right. All right. Fully assembled. Well, mostly fully assembled. So I guess if it's mostly fully assembled, it's not fully assembled, but it's mostly fully assembled. Um, so here we have the crane, um, yeah, this thing is, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty good size, uh, really, like, for what you're getting. Uh, you know, I mean, that's what a Land Raider is about, like that, so you're getting, like, an extra length of, you know, a Land Raider, uh, just in the crane. Um, and then we have the chassis and the turnstile. Uh, so I didn't glue these together, um, because I know that you can put the cargo crate on here, so I'm just gonna leave it. I might magnetize it, but I'm not even sure. I mean, if it's terrain... I might just leave it to where it just sits there. It's not like it's gonna be shoved around the battlefield too much. Um, and yeah, so I, I think it's it's really cool. I, I did leave some of these uh, little holes, um, some uh, periphery uh, unattached. I think there were a lot of these little options here, you know, like we were looking at the cutting torch. Um, they all kind of, they're fairly modular. Um, some of them aren't the best when it comes to like just a press fitting in there. <laughs> I'm knocking stuff off all over the place. Um, some of them fit okay, you know, like whatever that thing is. Um, there don't seem to be too any rules for the different components, so it really is just like a matter of like preferred aesthetic. You know, do you want this little doodly bit, or do you want a cutter? Do you want a pinchy claw? Uh, what do you want to do? I mean, some of this. You know, I might just put like a big smokestack or something there, you know, like an exhaust and call it good. I know it already has one, but, you know, some big boss smokestack to make it look more like a train. Um, and then that might also free up some of these bits that I can put on something else. Um, another thought is because it doesn't press fit very well, um, what I might end up doing is in the future, if I get another kit, and I probably will, um, I'll probably put like a plate underneath there and the magnet. So it just kind of magnetizes there. Um, another thought is like this one here, um, has a really hard time staying like, you know, a little, there it is. And all of a sudden it falls off. <laughs> Whereas some of the others are better balanced. Um, so the grabby claw, you know, it, it you get the, oh, there it goes. Now it falls over, but you know, I had it almost at like a 45 degree angle at that point. So, um, and then of course some of these just stay on really well. But, yeah, I think that's kind of nifty. Um, I mean, the part where you have to uh, magnetize everything is not nifty. Uh, but there's the, there's the tongue for the tractor. And choo-choo. <laughs> there it goes. Um, another cool option, I thought, was this, uh, this claw. I'm not a big fan of it, um, but it is repeated in the, um, uh, the Shadow Wars set. So... Uh, it, it is consistent, and it definitely goes along with the look and feel of uh, Games Workshop stuff. So, you know, I get that. Um, I mean, it's it has a brutal kind of look, but you also have an option of just like a regular claw, uh, a, a, a hook. So, 
that is also consistent. You know, like here we have um, a crane piece with the almost exact same uh, claw. So, you know, it is consistent. Um, I think I'm, I like this one a little bit more, but I'm not too sure what I would do with this one. Maybe I'd turn it into an orc thing of some sort. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, I think these are pretty dope. They ask for conversion so hard. <laughs> they really do. Um, so another cool thing about this, like I did go through their instructions. I think I, I mentioned that there were rules, um, and they're kind of interesting rules. It's, it's not like you just plop these down in this terrain. They actually give you a mission to play. Um, and it's, it's, so each one of these is an objective. I think you have this guy, uh, this guy, and then the crane are different objectives. Each one of them has like a stat line. So I think they're toughness seven, uh, three wounds, three wounds, six wounds. And I think this, they all have a three plus save. So I think that's kind of, it, it looks as though that might port over into eighth from what we know about eighth. Um, so it looks like you can kind of go both ways with it, perhaps. Um, and considering the eighth is going to be here in like a month, <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, otherwise, you're going to have antiquated rules for something going off into the future until they rebox it. So, um, I mean, it's kind of like a, it, it's, I think there's an attacker defender. Uh, each one of these is worth two objective points. Uh, the defender puts them in their deployment zone. And I think that uh, these two guys can move six inches. If this guy is attached to, or the crane is attached to the, uh, the, um, the cargo holder, uh, what do they call it? The dozer the, or the tractor? Uh, one of the two, I can't remember which one. They did specific, they did specify one of them, not both of them. Uh, but you can move this six inches as well. And it doesn't say that you have to have a unit by it, it just moves. Um, so maybe they assume that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a servo, something or other, so a servitor. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's just like something different. Um, I mean, it's a throwaway mission in a way, but it also adds a little bit of variety to the games played, you know, like, other than just the six in the book with a slight variation on the deployment zone, you know? So that's really cool. Um, I dig it. I think it's pretty fun. Um, it, this kit was a, it took a little bit longer to put together than I thought it would, uh, which is good. You know, I do like a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I think it took me about an hour roughly. Uh, so, you know, expect about that. And then if you want to do conversions, you know, you're adding to it. But uh, once again, I'm so excited about these. Uh, yeah, like little bits, little extras. Um, so that's it. Sweet kit, pick it up, 40 bucks, not bad. Like really, not bad. Um, I think it seems like it's priced more in terrain than it is a model kit. I mean, the amount of plastic you're getting is not a whole hell of a lot, um, but it, it definitely, you know, like you're, you're getting uh, something out of it. So um, yeah, take a look, grab one, do what you can. <laughs> anyway, see you guys.